until I'm off. Now I have the pleasure to introduce no, I have to leave. Mr. Ambassador. Leave we look forward to your Sorry. speech. Thank Please you. stand to the stage. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I put it. Can I use this? Thank you so much. You know, I, uh, I really feel after, uh, after this weekend that uh, we are old, uh, old acquaintance, old, old friends. Uh, I had the opportunity to speak with many of you. Uh, and as I mentioned uh, uh, yesterday, uh, we had also the opportunities to meet in various places in, uh, uh, in, in, in Sweden, but uh, that's, uh, as I hope, only, only the beginning. So first of all, uh, thank you for the invitation and thank you for giving me uh, the opportunity to be with you in this uh, uh, wonderful uh, weekend with the typical Israeli <laughs> weather that we all uh, enjoy. Uh, and uh, I, what I will try to do, I'm, I'm not going to give a long uh, lecture, just an opening because my aim is um, also to hear from you because it's very important for me to get uh, feedback from, from you. You know, many of you, if not all of you, are involved in uh, uh, Swedish-Israeli relations for so many years, and I'm a newcomer. I mean, I'm here only uh, nine months, and I'm still trying to, to learn. Uh, so I would like very much, um, I'll, I'll try to do one thing, uh, to share with you uh, my observations and uh, my thoughts after the first uh, nine months, having uh, met with uh, uh, quite a lot of, uh, of people here, uh, politicians, journalists, uh, uh, representatives of the uh, uh, academia, and, uh, and, and so on. But I cannot start without, uh, uh, first of all, thanking you all, and uh, above all, uh, thanking both Lars uh, uh, and Stefan, because I'm not sure that all of you know how much time and how much effort do they invest in, the, in Israel, in the relations between Sweden and Israel. And I hope you all uh, read what Lars uh, um, writes in the newspapers and when he speaks to the media. And uh, so really thank you so much for, uh, for what you do. It is so important. And, and uh, above, above all, I want to say that we, we cherish it and we don't take it for granted. And, and, uh, and we, when I say we, I, I speak on behalf of the State of Israel. And, and we thank you all also for, for all what you do and for your engagement. So thank you very much. Um, I, I would say that uh, if, if, I had to, if I have to define uh, my, uh, our priorities, uh, I uh, came here and of course uh, I started to learn uh, Sweden and the Swedish-Israeli relations even before I came and, and last we met uh, even before I came in, in Jerusalem and, uh, in the foreign ministry and I, I think that uh, if I have to define uh, according to our priorities, what is the uh, uh, number one priority uh, as to this point of time? Uh, I would say that uh, on, a, on a political level, and that's not the only level, but on a political level, uh, the aim is simply to try and reduce the level of, uh, I would say, even uh, I would use the word uh, hostility of the uh, foreign policy of uh, Sweden uh, uh, to Israel. To try and lower the flames, uh, many mistakes were done, uh, many wrong <laughs> decisions were made, and I think that, uh, as I said, the first uh, priority is to try somehow um, a, mainly through a dialogue, 
to, uh, to, to lower this level of hostility. And when I say dialogue, I mean dialogue with, well, I wanted to say, uh, but, but not, uh, not everyone, because uh, you know that we do not, uh, we, the State of Israel, we are not in contact with the Swedish Democrats. Uh, but uh, except from this, uh, we try to speak uh, with with, any, with everyone, and a, our approach is a very open one. We are looking for a dialogue, a sincere dialogue, an open dialogue uh, uh, with with everyone. And and I think I, I believe that after the first um, uh, nine months that I that I hear, I, I think that one can speak about. Uh, the good news and the bad news. Uh, so since I'm a great optimist, I will start from the good news. Um, my first impression uh, is that uh, we have many friends here in, in Sweden. And uh, we have, of course, this forum and uh, all the members uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, your organization, uh, but it goes much beyond. Um, I, I can say, you know, I, I as, as I mentioned before, I try to meet as many people as I can. And I have to admit, and I I'm, I'm want to admit, that whenever, wherever I go, wherever I go, I find friends. Uh, um, if it's uh, the, uh, you know, the private sector companies, uh, the, uh, uh, the economic uh, sector, uh, universities, um, a large variety of places, and whenever I go, uh, I, I really find uh, um, uh, good friends. And uh, I, I believe that there is a process, a beginning, I'm being here very, very cautious, uh, a beginning of, of a change. And that, uh, that change which has a few uh, reasons, and I'm, I'm not going to analyze uh, uh, all of them, but I think that, uh, um, and this is, by the way, a, a message that I try to convey also to the, to the government, to the Swedish government, without, without success until now, but I, I think that uh, people understand that uh, the world is changing, Europe is changing, Sweden is changing as part of, of, uh, of Europe, and I think that there is, uh, and again, it's premature to say, but I think that uh, there is a slight growing understanding of uh, the needs <coughs> of Israel and the way Israel look, uh, looks at, 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 at things and the uh, environment in which we, in, in which we uh, Israelis uh, uh, live. I'll give you one, one example. For many years, the belief here in Sweden, as, as I was told, and, and certainly in Europe, and I have quite a long uh, experience with, with <coughs> Europe, uh, the, the, the belief was that if only we solve the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, the Middle East will be the the, uh, the, the best place on earth, and we shall, you know, uh, uh, we shall uh, create a much better world, not only a much better Middle East. Well, I think that uh, since um, the beginning of uh, what uh, people call here in Europe uh, the Arab Spring, yes, uh, which, which we call uh, the uh, Iranian winter, but that's another, uh, <laughs> uh, another uh, issue, uh, I, I think that people uh, begin to understand that yes, the uh, Arab-Israeli conflict is important, the Palestinian-Israeli uh, conflict is, is important, but this is not the story of the Middle East, and you all know and you all see what is happening uh, in the last uh, seven years in the Middle East, and everyone, uh, well, almost everyone, understands now that the most uh, crucial uh, um, story in the Middle East is this rift, is this uh, uh, um, conflict between Sunnah and Shia, and, and uh, there are uh, conflicts in plural in the Middle East, and not conflict in um, uh, and not the conflict, the, the Arab-Israeli uh, conflict. 
And that, that's one issue. Another one is that uh, by understanding this and by looking today at what is happening uh, in Europe, uh, people begin, it's only a very beginning, but they begin to understand that when you are talking about the basic values, then uh, Israel uh, belongs to Europe. And when you're speaking about sharing values, you know, I spoke with, my, with one uh, member of parliament and he told me, you know, I have a lot of criticism towards Israel. But if something happens in Europe and I would uh, be asked to go to, to the Middle East, there is only one, one country to which I will go, and this is Israel, because we share the basic, in, uh, the, the basic values. And, and Amir uh, spoke yesterday about these uh, values, and I don't have to tell you that uh, there is only one country in the Middle East, and I'm not speaking now about politics, I'm speaking <coughs> about basic values of democracy, of human rights, and, and so on. It is not Iraq, and it is not Syria, and even not uh, Jordan or, or Egypt. Uh, in, in this respect, there is in the Middle East only one country. As, as I said, people begin now, so I hope, I hope it's not a wishful thinking, but people begin to, um, uh, to understand this. And there are some other reasons to which I will not refer right now to this process of, uh, I believe, a growing uh, understanding uh, to, to, to Israel. So that's for the, uh, for the good news. Um, the bad news is that um, I feel that there is still in, in Sweden, I, I have only one word to describe this, and this is, uh, and, and I really feel it sometimes, a sort of an obsession towards Israel. And it's not a secret, uh, uh, it's this obsession I find and you know, I'm not taking part in any domestic uh, politics in, uh, uh, in, in Sweden, but it is my observation as an, uh, as an Israeli, you find this mainly in the uh, left parties. Uh, I met many, many politicians uh, uh, from, from the center left, including uh, representatives of the Green Party and the, uh, and, the, um, and the Left Party, but also within the Social Democrats. I spoke with people that know that they have to be against Israel and that, the, that there is something wrong with Israel, but if you ask them for the reason, and if you ask them why, they don't know. <laughs> they were taught for 30, 40, 50 years that Israel is bad, that Israel is wrong, that Israel is something terrible. But if you ask them, if you go to, into details, and that goes to the, most, the, the highest places in the politics, including some ministers, and I won't name them, <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's serious because if you go into details and if you go beyond slogans and if you go beyond, you know, the, and you ask them, okay, let's, let's speak about, you know, nothing. I, I even met people whom, well, I didn't check it, but people who were against Israel, if, and I got the feeling that if I were to give them a, a map and to ask them where is the West Bank, they wouldn't know. <laughs> and and it's, uh, it, it, uh, it should uh, raise many uh, uh, question, mark. now, question marks. Uh, one of the problems that, uh, that I, uh, I see here, and I've learned it uh, since I arrived, and for me as an Israeli, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a challenge. Uh, the so-called, uh, not so-called, the, the tr Swedish tradition of being politically correct and the consensus. Now again, I refer to, uh, and I'm, I'm very sorry to, to say, to, to admit it, to have to, to, have to admit it, uh, I met politicians 
mainly in the social, um, among social democrats who understand <coughs> Israel and even uh, you know justify Israel but they're afraid <coughs> and I never met you know I spent many years in Europe I was working in Germany and in Austria and I traveled uh, uh, as, as an Israeli diplomat in many uh, European countries I never met this phenomena of both politicians and even some representatives of the media who are simply afraid to admit that they justify Israel. And this is something unique that I have never uh, met uh, uh, before. <coughs> I, I'll give you an example. In the parliament, and you know, I spent at least uh, twice a week uh, in meetings in, in, in the parliament. Uh, there is this, uh, um, simultaneously to what you do uh, here, in, there is a, a uh, parliamentary friendship group with, with Israel. Now in this group, you don't find even one, one member of the center-left parties. Not one. And when I speak to them individually, uh, well, most of them do not admit, but some of them told me it, if, if I do this, if I join this, this club, it will harm my political career. And I, I have to admit, and we are speaking now, you know, among ourselves, I've, I, I never met such a phenomena uh, in, in, in Europe, or, uh, and, and it's, it's astonishing because... Uh, well, we all live in a democracy, and uh, it should be an open society and a, a pluralistic society. And suddenly, <coughs> you you see people who who tell you more or less that they are afraid to admit that they are friends of Israel, and this is in the year 2018. It's it's quite um, uh, un unbelievable. Uh, I, I would like to uh, conclude with. Uh, uh, certain, uh, first of all, uh, as I said, I, uh, I'm a great optimist and uh, I think that the current situation uh, sets uh, also a lot of, uh, or creates also a lot of, uh, m many opportunities. And these opportunities, uh, I, I, I think we should grab with both hands and, um, <coughs> sorry, and, and seize them. Uh, first of all, the, the young generation. Uh, I believe that the young generation, the post-Cold War generation, uh, is, uh, as, as I said, there is a lot of potential here in this, uh, in, in this generation. This is not, uh, these, these, this is a generation that does not, did not grow up with this uh, obsession to Israel. And uh, again, I, I, I meet a lot of young people, mainly at the universities. I've already uh, visited uh, six or seven uh, universities. And when I meet these guys, you know, the 22, 23 years old, and when they speak about Israel, they don't speak about the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. And they don't speak about... Uh, the right, the so-called right of return. Uh, they see Israel as a center of innovation. They see Israel as the startup nation. They go to Tel Aviv. They they see what Israel is really <coughs> is, and and I think that th these are very. Um, uh, th this is uh, uh, it carries a lot of potential here, and it carries. A, uh, an opportunity uh, for for us uh, for us all. Uh, I I see it, I feel it, and I I, I really see the change within the uh, the young generation. And again, I'd like to underline: it's not that we Israelis are trying now to uh, somehow ignore the problem, the political problems, or ignore the need to solve the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. Not at all, but. Uh, the challenge of uh, introducing uh, the other side of Israel, what we in Israel call Israel beyond the conflict, or what other people say call uh, uh, the state of Israel and not the state of the conflict, yes? Uh, 
Uh, and uh, I, I think that there is a lot of, of potential. And, and uh, my, my last observations before, I would like very much to, to hear from you all. Uh, uh, my last uh, observation is a, a bit of some ideas about uh, how uh, how can we, as from 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 my point of view, how can we work uh, together? And uh, here I, I would say that uh, if I have to again to summarize it in in one word, uh, and here I speak about. Um, your organization, in one word, I should, uh, I, I, I can summarize it with the word influence, which means uh, I would envisage, uh, if, if you ask me what's my vision, yes, uh, and our common vision, and, and I've heard it from many of you already, I think we are on the same page in, in this respect. Um, I, I would like to see you as an organization that influences, that influences the political scenery, that influences the media. Uh, if, if you ask me, I, my dream is that every Sweden would know, first of all, that you exist and that you influence. And that you are, uh, first of all, you know, in America they call it the pressure group. Now, I know that it's not exactly Swedish and uh, it's not the real uh, way in which it, things work in, in, in Sweden. Uh, but uh, I, I would like that every member of parliament and every member of the uh, government and every journalist would know that you exist, would know that you represent something, and if something happens, you are there, and you go and you meet them, and you influence them, and uh, they know that, on, not on the back of their mind, but on the front of their mind, uh, they will have you. And before someone says <coughs> something about Israel, he will think twice and know, hey, here I have uh, the how many thousands of members who, who, who are also, who have, who carry political influence and they are there and they influence and that's very, very, um, very important. I think that it's legitimate that, uh, again, I don't want to interfere in, in uh, but I think that it's legitimate that if something happens in the Middle East, uh, your representatives uh, will immediately demand a meeting, either with the Prime Minister or with the Foreign Minister or with the Foreign Committee of, uh, of the Parliament to have political impact. It's very, very uh, important. I, I was thinking uh, about now towards the, um, uh, towards the elections. It's legitimate to demand from all parties to know how do they relate or how they are going to relate to the Arab-Israeli conflict, to the state of Israel in, in, um, in the future. So these, these are some uh, ideas which can have a uh, practical, uh, practical significance. Now to, to summarize, uh, I think that uh, we all have to, well, it would be advisable to work, <laughs> and again, I, I'd like to summarize, to sum up with, with one word, uh, to have a little bit of the Israeli chutzpah. What's the word uh, in Swedish for chutzpah? You all understand it. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, to be a to be just a little bit uh, with, with chutzpah. I think that uh, in, in this way, uh, uh, one can gain a lot of, uh, of uh, political influence, and this is what, what we all uh, strive to. Again, uh, first of all, uh, I, I will put a full stop here, uh, and uh, because because it's it's very very important for me to 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 listen to you all, 
And another uh, last thing, uh, you know, when I was speaking to you in the last uh, three days here, two and a half days, when, when we met uh, and I told many of you that uh, I'd like uh, to see you at the embassy or at my home in, in, uh, uh, in Stockholm, uh, I felt that people saying, uh, are thinking that I'm saying this for niceties, for diplomatic niceties. So, no, I mean it. When I say, give me a, co give me a phone call, uh, come for a cup of coffee, I mean it. So, please do. Thank you. <laughs>